Wooden slat walls are definitely in vogue at the moment, and I really like them, but have you seen how much they cost? So today I'm going to show you how I built this one from scratch for less than 30% of the ones that you can buy. Yes, less than 30%. This wall I've just finished, it's in my bedroom and the bed is going to go up against it. It's three and a half metres long and it's taken me a couple of days to complete. But things started a few days before that when I went to my local DIY shop to pick up these materials. And by coincidence, I actually spotted some acoustic slat walling while I was there, which wasn't cheap and is made out of a felt type material. But to my surprise, also including the slats, which is just a bit of fake wooden strip stuck onto the front, which looks a bit cheap to me, and also looks like it can be easily damaged. And because I want to build a wooden slat wall, I want it to be made out of wood. I'm a little bit old fashioned like that. So I got on to picking up some nice straight lengths of pine and three sheets of nine millimeter MDF. I've gone for nine millimeter just to save weight. I'm going to use this as a backing and really it doesn't have to be that strong. But once I've got all the materials, I can come back to the workshop and get on with the proper work. I'm going to be making the slats by cutting down 3 by 2 CLS and out of each piece I think I can get four slats. I've done a bit of a trial here on a piece I had kicking around the workshop and it ends up around about 44 millimeters wide by 12 millimeters or half an inch thick which I think is about the perfect size and I can get four of these out of each piece of CLS. At the moment 3 by 2 is running around about £3.50 each. So if I can get four of these out of a piece, that makes this costing about 90 pence. Alternatively, if you don't want to do any work, you can actually go and buy something ready-made that's already cut down and planed down. Unfortunately, I've just bought this from my local DIY shop and it cost me over £4. So 90 pence for something that you have to cut down yourself or four pound if you want to buy it ready-made. Now, it does mean that you do need a table saw if you're going to do it this way. If you don't have a table saw, listen until the end when I go through the money and the costing for this whole job, and I may well have a solution for you. Right, I think it's time that I start cutting this down. It's going to take me about an hour. I'm going to get really, really dusty and dirty, so I think I just have to bite the bullet, put my mask on, and make some sawdust. With a bit of trial and error, it's not that difficult to set the cut so you end up getting four equal strips of timber out of one piece of 3 by 2 You also don't need to worry about the curved edges on either side because you can either plane these out in the next step or put them to the back of the wall, which you'll see later hides them from view in the final product. Even cutting softwood here, it's important to wear dust masks to protect yourself like I am, even though I've got the vacuum connected to the saw as well. I check regularly that I'm getting consistent width cuts and work my way through the 18 pieces of 3x2 that I've just bought. Oh! So, gee, oh, gee, I need, really need to keep that dust mask on. That wasn't too bad. That was about 45 minutes of cutting. I now have four times more timber than before, but they are just a little bit smaller, each one, and I'm absolutely covered. This week, I'm definitely going to have to have a bath. Right, so each one has now got quite a nice smooth edge on either side. But I do need one of these sides to be nice and planed. And to do that, I'm going to have to use a hand electric plane because I haven't got one of those big planing machines that all the woodworkers use that run all their timber through. So I'm going to just use a normal electric hand plane just on one face of each of these. So even more sawdust.
However much I would like to have a thickness planer like the proper woodworkers, I wouldn't use it that much and I know that it would just end up in the corner covered in dust. So a hand planer today will have to do. While I'm doing this, I'm very aware that every time I stop the planer on the wood and pull it back, I'm probably cutting a deeper section, which I'll have to take out in the sanding process. Even though my relatively new planer gives an excellent finish because it's got nice new blades, it's not perfectly smooth and I still need to sand the face to get rid of all the little ridges. While I'm doing this, I can also spot the areas where the planer stood still on the wood. And with the sander on its edge, I can sand them and feather the lower sections away. I finally got through all the cutting, planing and sanding and I now have 70 8 foot long strips of very smooth timber that I must say has come out really nice actually. Final dimensions are 38 mil wide, not 44, I don't know where I got that from, by 12 and a half millimetres deep or about half an inch. And I've laid some out here on the bench with some 18 mil or 3 quarter inch spaces in between just made out of ply because I'm trying to work out what size MDF board to cut to mount these on. I'm going to have a number of boards that eventually will look like just one big wall. And I'm thinking about two foot wide or 600, but it does depend exactly on the spacing of these slats. I've got a little bit of a mock up here because in parallel to all this cutting, I've been thinking about what color to stain the wood. And I've ended up with something quite light, like this sort of light oak. And I finally got full approval from the client last night on this as well. And this also shows what I'm trying to achieve. I've got a MDF back in, covered with some black fabric pinned at the back, and then the slats on the front, but pinned from the back at these three quarter inch spacing. So it's like a mini version of what I'm trying to do. So I need to work out exactly what width MDF I need to cut, get it cut on the table saw, and then I think I also need to get on with some staining. I bought four sheets of MDF here, but they're not easy to manoeuvre and put through the table saw. So I would recommend getting them from a shop that can cut them down to size for you. As it was, my final dimension actually worked out to be exactly 600 millimetres, which gives the slats a nice overlap. And from the top of my skirting to the ceiling is just about an inch or so less than the length of the board. So I also have to trim off a little bit from the end of each of the six. Stain wise, it's obviously totally up to you, but I still like and prefer the oil based stains. And after giving everything a coat and leaving it for a few minutes, I can rub away the excess knowing that I'm not going to get any streaks or blotching. To make the black background, I bought some cheap black material from the range and stapled it tight around the back of the boards. Then the stained slats can then be laid out with the first one overhanging the edge by 12 millimetres or a piece of half inch ply that I've cut in the spacer. I can then pin this really well from the back and with this straight and secure, all my other slats can come off of this as a reference, 
using the three quarter inch spacers in between and then I clamp the whole lot in place. I'm doing this because I want to pin them from the back which is difficult to do if you're also trying to hold them from the front yourself. Obviously I'm using a pin nailer here but you could do it by hand or even use screws. On each board I've left two slats unpinned so I can use these areas to fix the board to the wall and then refix the slats once in place, hiding the fixings. For the installation I start in the corner and because my adjacent wall isn't quite vertical I add in a black strip of MDF, one of my offcuts, that will act as a shadow gap so the first slat is slightly away from the wall and it will make it more difficult for the eye to compare it to the outer plum wall. I initially rest the board on the skirting and then use my clamps to push it tight against the ceiling and my laser level just to make sure that it's absolutely vertical before marking fixing holes and drilling for wall plugs. There isn't much load to these compared to mounting something heavy like a television on the wall, so just standard plugs I think are good enough. I just cut one of the boards around the power socket I've got in the middle of the wall just to allow me to use it, also knowing that it will really end up behind the bed and unseen. And then it's just a repetitive process working along the wall using the spaces to ensure the gaps are absolutely consistent. So while Stuart carries on with the work let's have a look at the costs. So for this 3.5 meter long wall, I bought 18 pieces of 3x2 CLS at £3.50 each. I also needed three sheets of MDF at £25 each and eight meters of black fabric that cost me £25 in total. I also bought some wood stain and some bits and pieces of fixings, totaling under £200 or around £33 for a 600 millimeter or two foot wide panel. If I then compare it to panels that are ready made, these start around about £120 for wood or £90 for fake wood, which would cost me for this project over £700, which means I now have a saving of at least £500. And I mentioned at the start, if you don't own your own table saw, there may be an alternative. Well, with a saving of over £500, the alternative is to use that saving to invest in some tools and buy a table saw and a planer and a drill, impact driver and even a sander with the money you've saved which will then benefit you for a number of years to come and is something that I always recommend which is buying a tool to serve a purpose and to build a project. Anyway back to the installation. With an end trim piece fitted, I can then pop in the missing slats that hide all the fixings on each panel with small oval nails, which I then bury just below the surface with a nail punch. So that is the last slat in, and that, I think, has come out really well. I like the colour, and I really do like the way it's so regular, you can't see the joins between the different panels. The black material has worked out absolutely perfect. And because I was fairly careful with the depth of each slat when I was planing them, and using something like three quarter inch ply means that the gaps are absolutely perfect and regular throughout the whole wall. So I'm really pleased with that, and I think it looks absolutely stunning. So a really good start for this bedroom makeover. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Remember, subscribe, hit that bell notification, Patreon, all of that sort of stuff, and I will see you next time.